Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the ABB Formary FIA World Championship Press Conference for the 2021 Heineken London E Prix. We have with us this afternoon our race winner, Jake Dennis, for BMW i Andretti Motorsport. Second is Nick DeVries from Mercedes EQ. And completing our podium this afternoon is Mahindra Racing's Alex Lynn. Welcome, gents. Jake will dive straight in with you as our race winner. Fantastic result that propels you right the way up into second in the points. Also a home win, so you know, is there quite a big mix of emotions going on for you just now? Yeah, just high emotions, you know. <laughs> There's no mix. Uh, yeah, super happy. Uh, I really didn't uh, know what to expect going into the race. You know, it's a little bit different than normal. Uh, with not really much energy saving going on. So, yeah, it was just obviously intense battle with, with uh, Alex, you know, putting him under pressure. I can see that we have quite a bit more pace than Bawemi. Um So yeah, we sort of just ran away with it. And uh, yeah, then. I didn't know if Alex was just sort of saving energy or saving tires or generally just struggling a little bit where he was at that stage of the, the race. So we took the risk on the second strategy to, to stay out in front. I knew I could keep him behind, but I just didn't know if it would uh, work out better or not. Uh, and then, yeah, luckily he made a small mistake at turn 10. So then it was just about three qualifying laps, everything that we could uh, to, uh, yeah, pull the two second gap. And then, uh, yeah, it was just bring it home when we, when we got the lead. That second attack mode, I was listening to your team radio and it was there was a yellow flag and so your attack yeah. mode was on again, it was off again, then it was back on again. Yeah, so I talk us through that because it really sort of split your strategy from there on. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I think from turns 15 to turn 16, which is like 50 meters, we just decided to go attack, you know, attack about five times and they're like, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So we decided not, obviously, to use that yellow flag, but um, yeah, we just, we could have played it safe and just taken the second attack when Alex did. Uh, but because I felt like I had a pace advantage, we thought we may as well risk it slightly. Um, the only risk was just a safety car or something like that, you know. But, uh, but thankfully, it never came, and we uh, we, we pulled the gap to, to to create that 1.3 second gap, whatever it is. So that's what happened. And a few moments at the end about the vibration, but the pace didn't really seem to drop off. So again, what was what was going on in the car? What were you feeling? Yeah, we just had really severe vibration on the right rear. Um, you know, it was it was quite bad. So. I was generally just not really taking any care, uh, just making sure to bring it home. And the last couple of laps, I pushed a little bit harder uh, just to see where the pace was at. I think we went like seven times quicker immediately. So I think we have a really strong car, but it's just going to be trying to get to the bottom of the vibration issue we had. You know, it was probably the last 15 laps of the race. So I knew I could bring it home. It was just if the right rear would hold on or some body work damage or something like this, which was just taking over in about the back of my nine. And, um, but yeah, thank you, she held on, but uh, we need to strip it down tonight for sure. Well, it's fantastically well managed, congratulations Jake. Over to you Nick, you were super fast today, you were gaining seven places on the track where we were all told that overtaking uh, wasn't going to happen, so uh, how did you manage it? Um, I think, um, yeah, the inherent phase of the, the practice today was obviously very helpful. Um, then we had a good strategy and we were a little bit, well, lucky. Uh, to jump some cars when, when we decided to stay out longer and um, Andre missed his attack mode so I managed to take him and then there was a bit of a compression behind him so um, I think yeah some, some kind of key moments in the race gave us a bit of a, a breather and, and at the same time we were very you know quick so um, yeah then I managed to just close the gaps and, and um, yeah managed to, to get past uh, Seb in, in turn 10 which wasn't easy and then later in the race, I think um, Alex uh, didn't make it, you know, too too difficult because uh, uh, I guess at that point we were a little bit quicker and, and he was sending for third. So yeah, very very pleased to uh, come back after a bit of a bit of a difficult run. Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately tomorrow probably won't be much uh, much easier. Talk us through a bit more of those those moves on turn ten. Late on approach, you seem you seem sort of really happy there, but I suppose there must be an element of putting faith in other drivers when you're sort of so limited on the steering wheel. Yes, I mean I think whenever uh, you see someone in your mirrors going for it, you just can't turn it. So yeah, it, it certainly does require um, kind of uh, respect from 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 both uh, both parties. And. Uh, we know it's been sort of a difficult few races for Mercedes EQ, but you, you stopped that run in, in its track stay, more points for Stoffel as well. What what's changed? What have you addressed? What what came together today? Um, well I think nothing is different. We we approach every weekend 
the same and we always uh, turn up uh, best prepared possible. Um, I, I do believe that uh, in, in New York we were probably uh, not as competitive, not as competitive as we, we would have liked and, and, and expected to be. However, uh, I think in Puebla we, we definitely had a strong package too. But you know, given this uh, format, I mean, look at the championship standings, how up and down everything goes. I mean, it's just uh, it, it unpredictable. I mean, it said on all the publicity banners, world's most uh, unpredictable. Or is it championship or sport? Well, we're in it, and, and we are we are hating and loving it uh, all the time. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get the timing a little bit right uh, for the end of the season. But uh, the chances are likely that we drop out of Group One again tomorrow. Well, thank you, Nick, and congratulations on the second place. Alex, over to you third for for Mahindra Racing. Now, a great podium, a, a friendly, a friendly, uh, a friendly crowd. How does it feel? Honestly, it feels really good. I think um, I was super happy with the pole position this morning. The car's been on rails for one lap pace all season, but specifically uh, today and yesterday evening as well. So from that side, I felt super super comfortable that if I did just the lap I knew I could do, they would be there or thereabouts in quality. And then in the race, I think it's no secret that we, we aren't the fastest package in the race. Uh, we tend to destroy our tyres a lot more than most. So from that side, I was dreaming of the win back when I made um, good start and kept Jake behind. We were pulling a gap to the guys behind. I thought maybe, just maybe. But at a certain point, when I took my second attack, I saw the pace that Jake was able to unleash when, uh, when I was sat behind him. So at that point, I knew it was going to be difficult to, to try and get back past him. Um, and then, yeah, like Nick mentioned, he had extremely strong pace. Um, so at the end of the day, P3, I knew it was going to be a very good result for us and where we are right now. So I took that. When you're leading Jake early on, like you say, you have that gap. How you know how much of a conversation are you having with the team about bolting into a three-second lead when you know you could have a full course yellow and safety car that changes the race completely? Yeah, to be fair, it's, it's never really the smartest option, really. You know, once I knew that Jake was happy to sit there for a minute, uh, I was happy to let him do that and save energy on what my target was telling me. So at that point, yeah, it's very relaxed. You know that around the, the attack modes that's when it's going to start to kick off and that's when you need to start hitting fast lap times. But from, from my side, I was very relaxed um, to lead the race at the start. And then you, you had the lock-up at, at turn 10. Um, how did that thing affect things, obviously, in the moment, but also as a, as a race war one in terms of balance and, and your grip? To be fair, it didn't change anything for me. Um, I think the result would have been the same either way. Um, but that was the result of me trying really hard to stay within range of Jake to not give him a free pass to take attack. Um, I honestly feel like I drove 33 laps of qualifying today and maximised everything my car had. Thank you very much, Alex, and congratulations.